Hello, welcome to Extra Connections. I'm James Lachini here on JLJ Media. I'm the JLJ of JLJ Media. That's right, kids. And I love talking music. You guys know this. It is a passion of mine. Also, as you know, I put out songs and albums and all kinds of goodies. And so I want to talk to other musicians, songwriters, vocal coaches. It's actually a great thing for me because I get to get to, we'll get into the weeds of things. I don't care. I have questions for her that I want answered. I want her opinion on stuff. She just released a single. It's coming up for her new uh, debut EP. The single is called The Bottles by My Side. I heard it and I like it. And it sounds very, it sounds very Americana, which I like. Um, the, the guitar in it is great. Her voice is great. You guys are going to need to run, not walk. Well, I guess just go on your phones or whatever and get it. Yeah. Apple oh, Music, iTunes, yeah. Apple Music, Amazon. And everywhere. See, Spotify. That's, that's right. Yeah. Shelly yeah. Racebeck. Hello, Shelly. Hi, dear. Oh, it's so Very nice, nice to hear your voice. Yes, I thank you. It's good to hear you. Now, I did love the song, but I'm going to get to that in a second. So I want to start off with you first. Sure. Um, the whole thing about Americana, because I remember when it first started, it was like alt country, they called it. It was like this thing where, because back in the day, there was country country, uh, you know, going back to like George Strait, Randy Town, all that kind of country, and the twang and all that. We love that. But then, but then Garth Brooks Schneider Twain kind of came out and it was country pop. Winona, after she left the Judds, it was lots of country pop. But then suddenly, because there was also alternative radio, that, that was going on. But then also this alternative alt country thing came in with right. Nicole Case was the first one I remember the most. I love her. I love her. Um, and a few others started coming out doing this kind of, it's country folks, but it's just, it's just a, it's a different take in the music. Right. Um, so I want to ask you for you, uh, choosing to do this, this is your debut EP. You've been around for a long time, but this is your debut EP. Um, what drew you to this type of music at this time of your life? Wow. Uh, I first want to say it, Dominic may have made it, uh, it the, 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 I stutter. Yeah, you know, you I, stutter. Yeah. I don't stutter when I sing, but <laughs> sometimes I I'd rather just put it out there because so, sometimes people will go, bleh, 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 bleh. You yeah. know, they feel bad. I feel kind of icky. So I just put it out there. Sometimes I stutter. So um, to answer your question, I just first want to say that the song is The Bottles By My Side. By my Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's it is right here. Okay. So I'm looking yeah, at, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at, look at it. Yes. And the reason I, I chose that is because the bottle is significant uh, as a prop in the story because I was lonesome. I was hurting. It was the first cut is the deepest kind of thing. The one that got away and I was in the entertainment industry and you know, that's a, that can be rough. And oh, I was yes. so lonesome that I just felt like I, I was at a party and I thought, well, that's a bottle of whiskey. That, that could be a friend, you know, that's the, the crux of the song. So, um, I guess, if you can, if you repeat the question, because I probably got off topic. No, 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 that was good. No, that was first. So bottles by my side. That's why I make sure I make sure we have that. Bottles on, yeah, bottles on my side. On my side. That's what it is. Bottles oh. on my side. I'm looking at the. I'm actually now I'm looking at the uh, little EP thing. Oh, the boss single. Okay. okay, so yeah, I see it there. Okay. So uh, okay, so I wish we have that cover. That's cover. So that's out. And I'll put the links in this description so folks can go. go awesome. Go, Thank go, you. Get Appreciate it. That. Yeah. You guys get that. Um, but so, but you chose Americana. Cause you've done all kinds of music. So I was curious, yeah. how'd you lean to this or, or did it lean on you? Did it, was it, was it more? Oh like, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, you know what? I had a career um, writing uh, original music and, you know, I had done several recordings with major labels and I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't want to perform. And so I signed with a and Records publishing division and became a staff songwriter. And I learned a craft during that, and I made a living. Up, I'm still making a living off royalties from it. Thank oh God. yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And so I, you know, I would be called for. I'd get a call from a producer in a film or television series and say, "I really need a country waltz right now. Can you put it together by tomorrow?" Sure. I'd play all the instruments. I had a digital studio, and I'd sing it, and I'd make sure that it was broadcast quality, and it was a skill. You know, it was a skill. It wasn't my story. It was a skill. That, that's the difference. When I moved to the desert six years ago from L.A., I decided that I, I really wanted to get out of L.A. 
And so I live in the desert now near Joshua Tree. And things just started coming back, these stories, these images, these colors in my head when, when I think of something. Like that song, for instance, was all about the smells and the sights and the things I felt. I was sitting cross-legged when I, when I remembered that image of me sitting at a party. And there's a crowd around me listening to my original songs. And um, so all that came back. And that just started flooding. And now I'm writing like crazy, just more st well, the storytelling. And, um, you know, I still am open to like getting, uh, it, not really. I, I, I wrote this song with the intent of someone else singing it. Oh, and I'm okay. thinking, you know, of, of quality, Nora Jones, Ooh. Alison Krauss. Oh, yeah. Um, Lucinda Williams. Um, oh, yeah. Yes, yes. You know, or, you know, so I wrote that and then I did the vocal and it sounded okay and Greg Wells produced it. Um, but what I'm enjoying more is this, I'm more present, there's the word again, when I'm telling a story of authenticity, of, of true, true core, you know, it's a real core experience for me to write these songs. And, and that's the difference between what I did in the past, which I'm blessed as well uh, to have that skill. So Americana just came. It just came. The other songs are too. Um, it's, it's the upcoming songs. Um, I, I've always played acoustic guitar, even in the band. And even though yeah, I went to electric for a while, but yeah. and I have electric. I play electric as well. Um, but Americana is... It just resonates. I'm from Missouri. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, you know, and Americana is is just part of who I am. It's part of my experience growing up, spending time in the Ozarks, um, hearing church music, um, going to revival tents with my mama. Um, it's just part of my fabric. Yeah, I want to go back to something you just said, because speaking of being present, I, I listened always do I hear stuff what what is the mindset of after years of performing and being a performer because that is a um a certain that's a certain mindset and a certain feeling you're looking for when you're performing um versus being behind the scenes uh I just kind of want to know a little bit what was going through your head when you said you chose to stop performing like who, I, who, how did you come to that decision? Like what was going on for you that you were like, I'm just, that's it. A couple of things, the band broke up when we signed another deal and there were drugs going on. And I just, I, I loved the band members, they were fabulous. They were my family, really, and wonderfully talented individuals. Um, but I just didn't want that family right then. I just wanted to take a break and, and uh, do some solo stuff, which I did. Um, and you know that's that's pretty much it. I um, yeah, because I guess you know people always say like because you're in the front, you're in the front, you're out there, you're doing all this stuff. And it's like I always tell people that not everybody, you know, you 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 know, your stations in life change, you change hopefully as you're getting older and changing and going through experiences. That sometimes things do shift where you're like, right now I want to be behind. Yes, stuff. that's exactly what happened, and I did. And, you know, a lot of people, I met Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is an introvert. Yes. He's like, hi, you know, like that. So it's Janet. I met them because she was on the A&M line. Yeah. And um, many people, Al Alanis Morissette, she's an introvert. Oh, really? She gets I didn't on know stage that. and she's committed to telling her story. Michael Jackson got on stage and was committed to a performance. And it's really kind of, it doesn't mean that you're an extrovert and people assume that. And I used to not like people coming backstage before I go on. Uh, I didn't like people coming backstage after I went on. I went really? to go on. Yeah, I didn't like all that fuss. You know, it's just fussing. And um, it distracted me, especially before a show. I really just needed to get into my, uh, into myself and get ready to present my stories. So um, I didn't, I just didn't like it. No. It wasn't for me. And it was great being behind the scenes. 
now I have to do a couple promotions to the, I'm hoping I will be doing some shows uh, when I finish these three other songs. Okay. Uh, two, one is already finished. Um, and it's funny, talk about skill sets. I did, I did a performance last November and presented okay. some new material. And um, I got up on stage and I was like, oh. And then you get up on stage and that you just do it. You, you commit, I committed and rehearsed weeks and months. Of course, of course. That's true. And I knew I wasn't going to forget lyrics. I wasn't yes. going to forget the chords. I was ready. And then you let go. And so that part just kicks in. I don't really like it. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I love being yeah. up there. I love the audience feedback and everything. Yeah. I'd much rather, like when, this song, I really hear somebody else doing it. You know, um, uh, Cheryl Crow, um, like Nora Jones. Yes. Haley Williams writes her own stuff. Right. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, but, you know, some of the newer, younger yeah. female artists that are out there, that's where I hear this going. And of course, it can be used in a film or yeah. commercial or whatever. I um, I told somebody the other day, I said, because uh, I write, I write uh, audio dramas and also write songs. And I said to somebody the other day, I go, for me, because I, I mean, I, I'm an extrovert. So I'm the opposite. I'm an extrovert. But I like, I don't have to be in front of everything all the time. I'm not one of those extroverts. I'm just like, I can do it. It's easy, comes easy for me. But I like my downtime. I like to, you know, in the back. I said, for me, I remember I cried. Literally, a big old, a big old black man, 300 pounds, six feet tall, deep voice, cried when I heard someone singing my song when i heard someone reading my script and bring it to and bring it to life i started crying and i remember the actors like why is james crying I'm like i'm so happy right now like it was it was happy tears it was like it's happy tears but there's i'm gonna ask you about this is there something about someone bringing your lyrics to life yeah there's no other feeling is right am i am i right am i right girl am i right totally, totally. i um i had that experience my first um, someone else covered my song and it was a K-Rock song. It was kind of- Oh, wow. Called, um, I Want to Be a Popular Girl. Okay. I had written it as a ballad, but oh, um, wow. this, this woman on, uh, um, what was that show with, um, she was a soap opera star, General Hospital. Oh, now, now I'm like, which one was that? Like, which one, which one? I'm like- Michelle she... Kepler was her name. Oh, yes, you played Dominic. Yeah, I don't see us. Yes, I don't see Yeah, yeah. So she put out a record, and it was my song was the single. And so I heard it on K Rock, and I just was, I was blubbering, honestly. It was just, it was amazing. And I've heard people, there's a singer, I think, that is just absolutely brilliant named Robin Kiermsay. And I've had her sing my songs that, and it takes it to a whole different level. You know, I, I, I'm a good singer. I'm practiced. I'm in tune. I, I have my little riffs and you know idiosyncrasies, but this woman, ah, oh, man, she sang a lot of our demos when we were. Um, oh, no, there you go. Angie Rubin and I were songwriting partners at, in, in under contract, and she sang a lot of our demos and sold those things. Man, you know, people would just be, I want, I want to do that song. Um, so yeah, yeah, I do. I, I get very emotional. You know, um, it just. Uh, you know, when I've had song in films and I go to the screening and like, yeah, I know, right? It's just, it's, it's a blessing, you know, it's just, I don't think like of an ego thing. I think no, it, no. it's more like, wow, I'm being validated and I'm being celebrated and I don't have to perform to <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that to you? Yes. Is that to you? And, uh, for, for me, Shelly, it is, it's not ego either. It's just, but you no, know, it's just, it's amazing. Like something that came out was born out of my brain. That I was, Wait, I, fo I don't follow that. What do you mean? So if I write, if I, well, if a song, I always say it's divine intervention. So a song comes to me, yes. I get a spark of an idea, and then I put it on paper. Well, at least I say paper, it could be computer or whatever. I put it on paper and someone brings it to life, I feel so, it's more about that for me. There's something that came out of me. Yeah. Translated well enough. Yeah. You know, you know how this is too. It translated well enough that they were able to receive it and then 
do their things with it yeah. and put a song. You know, that's, yeah. that's what I mean. That's what I mean by that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a great way to put it. I, I just made a couple of notes. Oh, yeah. Just, I, oh. Yeah. It is. You're transmitting. You are. Um, you're emitting a certain vibration. You're emitting by singing and writing, um, and people are receptive to certain vibrations and certain. Um, I'm not. This is not like hokey pokey crap. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's true. I want to say something. In college, I had a professor who made me read what was required reading. Maybe, but he he had a book called. Uh, what was it called? Chasing the Wild. <clears throat> oh. It was about vibrations and it was very scientific about certain vibrations will give you a certain feeling. Well, I think I was maybe even chasing the wild vibrations or something like that, but it was more clinical than that. Okay. And okay. it was enlightening. One of the things I learned, like, Say I have an issue with Spectrum Mobile or something. Okay. The first thing I have learned to do because of knowing about the vibrations and what they can cause, and when you send out and how people receive them, I'll call and say, hi, this is Shelly. There's a little thing going on with me. I lower my voice. I get so low that I'll, I'll let them talk and they'll say, I understand where you're coming from. You know, you have a difficult job, but can you look at page two and it's always resolved just through a kind, authentic vibration. And I remember taking that course just going, what's it got? I'll, I'll think of it and I'll, I'll text you yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. But um, it was, it was life changing because it was a combination of science. You know, Cause we all know for a yeah. 440 is that everybody goes through a vibration when you tune a guitar. Yeah. You know? um, Anyway, I thought that was really interesting. Well, you know, because Shelly, the thing is, I learned, and I was telling you before the, the show, my my voice changed at 13. And so I learned at 30 that my voice was magic in terms of how people receive me. Uh-huh. Because my voice, I guess, I, I've heard it in somebody else, so now I know what they mean. So there are times when I'm in a restaurant talking to somebody, and depending on where you sit, vocals bounce off points and hit someone's ear a certain way. And I go to people go to me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I love your voice. I mean, I wasn't talking to you, I, but they, we heard you, I'm sorry, we heard you over there. And so it happened to me once before with someone else, too, I was at a Starbucks, and someone was talking like way over there, but the way it bounced hit my ear, I was like, oh my God, I'm totally turned on. Being funny, I'm turned on. Yeah, yeah, um, I can. You know, but, but I was like, oh, now I kind of get, it. I, was, I was like 30 years old when I realized that vibrations and the tone, the cadence, whatever it is my voice, yep. people respond to it. So I've learned the same thing when it comes to problem solving. I used to be, yep. back in the day in retail, I used to problem solve all the time because I knew how to speak to people. Yep. Yep. And they received it like, oh, yes, James, whatever you want, so to speak. Oh, I like, know, it's right. a soothingness. It's not fake, I'm not putting no, it on. not at all. You know, and I just talk to them like human beings. You know, they're sitting in a customer service cubicle you know yeah. but it's also um you brought up a good point because it's also i mean i can think of politicians for instance that you listen to i listened and i chomped on every word of obama i loved his politics i loved him still love him great um, order great order. and they were oh he's just he knew when to slow it down he knew when to bring it up and he did it wasn't he didn't go, ah, and, you know, get the crowds right. all crazy. Right. You know, he built. He knew how to build it. And then there was a politician that I think he was running against, who I won't say, but her voice, it, it just hurt my ears because A, and, and men do it too. Yeah, they well, too yeah. Fast, they talk too fast. They, uh, and they get all riled up and it just, it goes to a frequency. That's it, chasing the wild frequency. That's there you go, the see, there you go, you got wild there. Wild. Yeah, but it goes to a frequency where you just tune it out. Yeah. You don't listen, you're just like, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. And yeah. some people have that and don't realize it, that if they just slow down. I taught, when, and I had my vocal coaching practice, yeah. I taught lawyers. I taught lawyers. Oh. Yeah, 
guy was uh, a young lawyer was uh, losing his voice and he had, and and he was closing our closing arguments he came in he took about four lessons and he was going and he i said well tell me read what you're going to say ladies and gentlemen of the jury and i'm like ah you know i never said that i would say hey let's let's approach it this way first of all lower the tone down into the belly solar plexus um ladies and gentlemen of the jury pause you've got me right there right you've got me right there as opposed to you know it just doesn't work and and he of course had a successful law practice and practice i even taught a woman um very famous um author who was doing a book tour and she was losing her voice and she came in and um was able to show her the exact same t- techniques. Of course, you've got to still warm up. Yeah, yeah. If you're even speaking, a speaking engagement, you better warm up if you're doing a tour. Yes. You know, but um, yes. let's bring it back to what we were talking about. Yeah, I was about that. No, seriously, uh, the voice is an instrument, folks. It's not a <laughs> joke. I hope people say it and they go, ha ha. It's really an instrument. And and if and not just for singers, I was telling her, it's, not, it's for teachers, speakers, yeah. trainers, um, anybody who does any prolonged use of your voice, right. hosts, my fellow hosts, like you guys, we will know, you guys know me. I tell you this all the yeah. time. You have to get it ready. Yeah. You have to, you have okay. to. And it causes less problems. I tell you. Right. Less right. You know, I used to equate it with, this is my baby guitar. Her name's Maybelline. I mean, hey, Maybelline, I like a, that. A vintage guitar. That's just from 1971. Oh wow! Yeah, and she's all wood because so many guitars now aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Veneers. So I used to equate it to my students. I said, "So I'll, I'll play you something, and then what am I going to do with my guitar?" I said, "Here's what you do: you clean it off, you warm down, you clean it off, and you put it in the case. You don't let it sit out there and get, you know, become uh, vulnerable to the elements." Right. And they it. You know, they all wore scarves in the winter. They never show up at Miss Shelley's. Yeah, see, very good. You got it. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a, it's a really um, healthy notion to take care of your instrument. Yes. You know? Yeah. And I have said I have bunches of instruments, and I, yeah. they're all treated, pampered. You know. Exactly. So. Now, also the same thing, because um, also you've written songs. Have you run across? Because I've run across this too, where either the song was not quite right for that vocalist or there were certain parts. Like you, you, you should do these parts that are better of the song than these. I mean, have you ever across that ever in, in your years of, of songwriting, giving songs to people at all? Well, I think that I, I write to my own range and that's some, okay. sometimes a mistake. I mm-hmm. had to stay in a certain range for singers. Um, and I wrote, uh, when I was doing demos at the time that when I was at the publishing company, um, Angie and I decided right away to do a male version and a female version. How funny. Wow. Okay. Well, we, it was known in the industry or the rumor was people would listen to a male vocalist rather than a female vocalist more. I don't know if that was true, but that was motivating. We'll be, we'll be surprised, girl. I would not be surprised. Back then, especially, I would not be surprised. Yeah. But you know we did and it was fun and so sometimes we'd write the same song in this in a key that both could do so it was very interesting yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. interpretations like we'd have to get a tenor and then somebody who could do alto stuff a female who could do alto stuff yeah. so it was very interesting yeah that's very so but, but to get to your point like some songs just aren't right for some singers right, and I think so singers, too, right. yeah so exactly what you're saying this, some singers um it's just material isn't right. I couldn't sing Beyonce. I mean, I could. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. but it'd be this little white girl, you know, I'm a <laughs> version of Beyonce, which is not a bad idea because her songs are yeah, they're good. stellar. This new they're record good, is, yeah. Yeah. is beyond. Yeah, it's I, just agree. beyond. I agree. I agree. Oh, man, she blows me away. I'm yeah. real impressed with her right now in a, um, an artist called Flume. If you haven't heard of them, F L U M E. Yeah, okay. Unbelievable with featuring uh, Ma, Maya, Maya, M A Y hyphen A. 
Okay. Unbelievable. Okay. Okay. Wow, so fresh. Okay. So I'm real keen on that. And I I laugh at myself because somebody would go, well, what are you listening to? Like, this week? This is my favorite this week. Oh, yes. I'm not, I'm still into music, every single kind. Me too. Me too, girl. Me too. I mean, I have friends that go, no, we want to listen to 80s, oldies, or 90s. That's cool, you know, but man, there's some amazing stuff from Billie Eilish. I mean, she's not my whole. I love her, but yeah, she's, yeah. She's great. Taylor Swift, come on. How could anyone be that prolific? Right. You know? Yes, I mean, that, that's our generation, they're like, who? Yeah, I know. Mine too, I know. Yeah. Um, but I want to ask you, that's the thing, being because there's, there's, I go through periods where I may write like six, seven songs in a week, just popping them out. The other time I have, I've done it before, but they just come to me. And wow. then it doesn't happen all the time. You know, I think I just, I just pop out song. I'm just saying right. that there, it could be like maybe once every couple of months or so, it'll happen where I just dream them and I write them. Now, right. not in terms of putting them together, yes, there's a story, but actually writing out, actually I have two songs I dreamt the other night I have right on here, my thing. One is called, I Don't Think of You That Way. And the other one's called, I'm Sitting Here Waiting For You. I had just written these the other night. But two songs came to me in one night. Wow. It, happens, it happens every once in a while, but not, but not always. I have other songs that take like months to, to write. Yep. I, get, I get a piece here and a piece there and a piece there. Yeah. And so what I, is, just, I, I just finished a song um, called I'm Not the Marrying Kind. Yeah, it's really cool. It's I'm Not the yeah, Marrying. Yeah. I'll play a bit. Um, oh, but, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. Okay, please. I'm Not the Marrying Kind. <laughs> Hoping that you'll find someone who walked on down the aisle, wedding bells and chime. I've got the Jackson County line, doing number nine. Radio is blasting, pants and crying. I can't help it if I, 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 I'm the marrying kind. Anyway. So, I love it. I love it already. I love it. Thank you. It's copyright and it's it's uh, produced. It sounds really okay, good. Good. okay. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay, good. So, but um, you were going to ask me a question. I just got so, yeah, so no, no, about, no, no, I love it. This is what I want. You know what? It, it, you sparked me by telling me you write songs from a dream, and that I write songs many times from normal conversations. People at the grocery store. Uh, I had an interview the other day with a woman, and she said she was an interviewer, and she said naturally nosy and I said I'm gonna write something about that because I got this whole image of a naturally nosy person yeah at the market or at uh, the theater and they're walking down the street they want to meet so and so anyway I, I'm, I'm definitely gonna do that I'm gonna write it this weekend so that's where my some of my inspiration comes sometimes in dreams and most of the time I, I can't remember the, the tune so but I remember phrases and that usually tr triggers me. Yeah, I well, I, if if I can, not always, I try to wake myself up. <laughs> and then on my phone, it may sound horrible. I'm like, eh, I love that. Like, but it matter. But I have to get it out. Right. If I can get a piece of the melody out, then right. I can. I, later when I wake up, I can usually decide. It usually, they'll come back to me. And go, yeah, sure. that, that was the melody. That yeah. was the melody. But no, you don't want to hear what's on my notes or my right, my right, right, order. Right. Yeah, at yeah. three in the morning because it's it's it's, it's, it's not it's not pretty shelly it's not pretty but the lyric the main like i for this like for this one i can this is like i can show this thing to this tnt this is all right okay so i i i had a dream that but this is the line these are the lines that i had what am i supposed to do we're in a world we never knew half the time i'm feeling blue i'm sitting here waiting for you that's okay. what i dreamt yeah. Wow. And I made a song out of it. That's why I, I dreamt that in a melody. And I, and I was on my, and so at three in the morning, girl, I'm like, what am I supposed you to do? I'm like, I'm trying to get it. I know, I do it all the time. I, my iPhone is, and I, I, I guess it's a, it's, I guess it's a voice memo. That yeah, I it's like voice memo. Yeah. Voice, what, what, oh, what I've got, I've, I have written songs that way in pieces. <laughs> yes. And uh, this one included, I'm not the Marion kind. That was a very difficult song to write lyrically. Well, I love that. I love that. Um, I love it. Thank you. But I was going to say, um, sometimes uh, I don't remember the melodies when I wake up. And I'm Ooh. so disappointed because I just, in the dream, I'm like, oh, it's the best melody ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I wake up and go, no, 
Oh, oh my God. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so, but when you are, okay, so this is really good. This is really a question I want to ask. I've never had a chance to ask this question before. When you are a hired songwriter under contract versus I write songs myself when I feel like it, what is the difference? How does that work for you as an artist, as your creative process? That's a great question. And I'll tell you, the uh, work for hire that I did, it's not really work for hire, but right. hired, you know, hired to do a certain, that was called project writing. Okay. And that was a skill set. That's what I learned to do. I could still do it. If somebody called me and said, I need this and this, I could do it. Oh, okay. Um, the difference is, it's, those kinds of songs that I'm writing now, come from a different place um and they are i mean i just get these i know it sounds bizarre but i usually get images i get the whole song in an image well, i said i understand that i understand that okay. like and i like to to i like to put that image you know that song i just sang, sang to you I'm at, I'm at the jackson county line you know and i'm going over time you know i mean that's a true story. That's all about Missouri, driving through Missouri. And it, it, in, in that song, uh, I'm traveling by myself. I've got a Cadillac in it. And <laughs> I go up to Joplin and I find this little dog and it's all about, but, but this, this is a good romance. Not, it's not a romance, but that's right, what the song right, is like. Right, right. You know, um, I meet this wonderful dog, a great companion. And um, so it, there's a story, there's a story that goes on about it. But um, that's where I come from. I come from uh, images. And if I get an image, I've got to make sure that that image is portrayed properly um, with words. Does that make sense? It does. And I was going to ask you, are you a good photographer or a good painter also? I am the worst That's so funny. Because you, OK. Um, I used to, I was an artist. Um, and I don't paint much anymore. but. I, I like acrylics. I like that medium. Me too. I used to, I used to paint in acrylics also. Really? I, it's, I used to get stretched it's not canvas. like oil. It's not stinky like exactly. oil. Exactly. And it's got this great texture. Um, it's, it's easy to work with. It's, it's, yeah, forgiving. Like it. it's forgiving. It is forgiving. It is forgiving. And the, the colors are different than oil colors. Different. Yes. Just, it, yes. Just, it seems to vibra vibrate for me more. Me too. Me too. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Let's get married. I, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm like, you're the perfect person in my life. Um, it's it's funny because I, I I painted, I did a whole, I did a whole painting series, 2000, 2002, then I stopped. Mm -hmm. and then ten years later, I picked up again around 2011 to 2013. I was painting a lot of stuff, but it was it's acrylics, stretch canvases, I was doing all kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, but it's, it's, I just know it's an easier paint to work with. It's just more forgiving in many ways. It doesn't smell as much in the, yeah, in the house. Yeah, oil. Yeah. Yeah, that's my problem. Even though I like oil, I do, but it's, it's just, at the time, a friend of mine was doing lots of watercolor painting. That's all. That's hard. Like, oh, that's hard. I was like, I'm like, that's yours, girl. That's yours, girl. I'm like, I'm doing all that. And beautiful stuff. I was like, I don't know how you would do that. But I, I like, have no idea, because that's not forgiving. No. That not not forgiving. Yeah. <laughs> not Man, that water starts to, you know, yeah. do what it does, and you're like, is it a cloud? Well, I was trying to That's... paint a garden vegetable, and there's something a cloud. What? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Cloud, you exactly. Know? You yeah. can kind of you can kind of control well as much as you do when it comes to creating control when it comes to acrylics and oil you can do a little more control but i just that's so funny we have that in common that's so funny but i i want to pick it up again soon i have an idea i want to i, I want to pick up it again i just i just haven't yet but okay. i would to um so you decide you decide to release an ep so first of all i have to ask this i i know it's so folks just releasing music most of music's not always easy you have to choose and everything so why ep not album and why ep now <laughs> wow. wow that, that's succinct there you go. Um, i wanted to release this because i this song it means a lot to me um and i got a great production and i'm absolutely thrilled with the people that worked on it val mccallum greg wells um just just unbelievable um, and I wanted to sort of just test the waters because I have just recently started getting back into social media okay. and I feel like it's worthy 
Um, and the other songs are too. They're definitely going to be released as an EP. Um, I just wanted to test the waters. Okay. And I was really just chomping at the bit to get it out there and have people play it. Yeah. I'm also really focusing, as you know, to get it to other artists. That is my main thing. Yeah. So the more blogs I get, the more hits I get, the more Instagrams, all of that um, is going to help me. Um, I have target, you know, I have some target artists yeah. in mind, yeah. and I can always use use you know a publicist like Dominic to do yeah. if I want to go that route. Right now, I just want to create a buzz, and that's going to give me a time to um, get my social media skills up and also finish the other songs okay. and then i can release a, a full ep yeah. i could even do an album but i'm i'm just chomping at the bit to get it out and yeah. especially these new songs it's always like that you, you like your new song the best right it's yeah. like oh my god he's i like my new baby i like my new baby <laughs> why is the other it's person true, true. yeah it's the true. last song you wrote is always your best i will say you that's know? that's that's yeah. totally it i said that's totally and, and you know and since i'm on a writing jag um the songs i'm writing right now are really good i'm super proud of them like i'm not the marrying kind and then i have another one um that i've written and it's about my life and and but it's more relevant to times now it's about women and when you're a very young woman and you get pregnant and you keep your baby and it's about babies raising babies and it's, it's just awesome um the name of the song is called mama tried but she was just a child she did the best she could she did but she was just a child no not but mama tried she did the best she could she was just a child so it's forgiveness like, yeah our parents made mistakes you know it's a really healthy song it's really healthy um and actually right now i'm looking for a producer for it because i want to do something a little different more like um i'm trying to think of who well not film he would be perfect um i don't want to do like a hip-hop version it would be okay. untrue to the song but less acoustic guitar okay more piano oh, okay and even piano and strings would be real nice but i'm not i'm not married to the idea yet yeah. um but it's it's a really good song I'm real proud it is. Of yeah no i mean well, we can share it with you i'm all ears <laughs> i'm all ears i'm all <laughs> ears i want everything i want to hear everything you have i want to hear everything um no but that's the thing i mean we go i said we go through periods where the streak's hot and and we are we're and again not from ego place we're just thinking these are some good songs like i've written this stuff and i really feel like this is something of quality. I said something of quality. Right. That's what, for me too, I, I took a break from writing for about four or five months. Um, I wasn't, I just had nothing else to say. And that yeah. happened too. And yeah, sure. I, yeah, then I came back and I was like, now you have stuff to say again. Because, okay, okay. well, the world these days um, yeah. could be a great catalyst in writing stuff. Right. Yeah. So, how, so how, for you, how much of the world do you take, you feel influences a lot of your songs these days? Unfortunately, I think the chaos that's going on within our country and globally. Um, I try to just pray and hope that we get through this. And, you know, I've written many songs about how I feel about what's going yeah. on. I yeah. mean, it's, and I'll just say it, I want to edit it out. This white power thing is global. I know. This has been going on a long oh, I'm, not, I'm not in this part, this part stays in because it's the truth. Yeah, this the truth. is sick yeah. and it's upsetting uh, and it's, it, it, it's not just, you know, our former bad guy. Orange no, guy. it isn't. It really isn't. No, it is not just about that. Nope. This has been going on. Our civil war was never, ever ended. You know, I agree. If Lincoln lived, it'd be a different world. I, I agree. Why do you think he was shot? Right. By white power. Right. Yeah, of mean, course. Right. And it's still going on. It's it is. sick. It's sick. Totally you know, agree. on the side, um, I've always been more of a liberal. Um, and I remember I was teaching songwriting class to Los Angeles Juvenile Hall. Oh, wow. And okay. it was really a great experience. Okay. I was a liberal, you know, like, yeah, I know. Yeah. And uh, people of color get put in jail more. It was 
in my face. You know, I was talking to these young men and I'd bring in like, we just, they would just jam. They'd be like bugging out beats on the, you know, on the cafeteria um, table. And I got to know them pretty well. And, um, you know, got to, they would volunteer why they were there. One 16 okay. year old sticks out in my head. I'll never forget it. He was just adorable young man, right? He said he, and it was true because I checked with his, um, one of the officers, he was driving his car uh, on the freeway late at night and he accidentally hit somebody who was changing their tire. He oh. was not under the influence. 16. Okay. okay. Got it. Well, he got life. He was waiting in juvenile hall. He was waiting in juvenile hall to turn 18 and they're sending him to a federal prison. And I just... And yeah. this was not the only case. Still, it oh. still makes me nauseous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was not the only case. Right. I would say ninety percent of these young people, oh, yeah. they're mm -hmm. going for life. Yeah. This is no joke. Fifteen years old. See, right. he was sixteen actually. But still, I'm yeah. sorry it happened. I'm sure he, he was. You know, he was not crying, but he's very emotional. Yeah. Telling me the yeah. story. Yeah. Not even so much that he was going away. It was almost like he knew he would because he's of color. He was emotional telling the story of hitting this yeah. individual. Yeah. He was so, you know, like I said, always been what I believe to be on the good side. Yeah. And, uh, it was eye opening um, and it just ain't right. I wasn't raised that way. Yeah. I was raised in a mixed neighborhood. I was, you know, I'm speechless. Ron. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's, I just did an interview with a, a famous soap actor, he's a friend of mine, Eric Braden, and we just talked about the same thing. He's like, James, I know as a black man, your life's different than mine. I know it's different than yours. I mean, I, I've been here for yeah. 50 years on earth, and I can tell you 10,000 experiences I've had, and I'm a, I'm considered a law-abiding citizen who's, you know, does what he does and pays his bills and all that stuff, but it doesn't, it's, it just didn't, these instances, it didn't matter. It is. It didn't. My yeah, skin color. Yeah. When you're pulled over. Yeah. Whole different story than when some old white lady. Is, well, I'm not old, but uh, <laughs> some old, a beautiful white lady is pulled yeah, over. Yeah. Uh, you know, a whole different deal. Yeah. I mean, I remember getting pulled over and getting asked out by cops. That didn't happen. That doesn't happen wow. all the time. That's all the time. But you know, oh, you know, let let the ticket go. Yeah, let it go. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ugh. But um, yeah. I never really, you know, this, the idea, I don't know, it, I, I don't even, it, I can't. Yeah, I know. It. It's, you know, okay. I moved it's, out of LA. Because we're creative. Yes. Huh? Yeah, because we're, of, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I moved out of LA six years ago. Okay. And I had a real nice home and um, it was funky and it was multiracial. I dug it. The first day I moved in, there was a quinceanera going across the street. Hey, okay. You know, the guys next to me were um, gay guys, partners. We were definitely best friend neighbors. Yeah. Um, people next to me were uh, Latinos. Um, people down the street were Armenian. And it's like, man, it's just the right place for me to be. And so as things went by, it just got so whited out. It's got so. Um, yeah, that's happening to you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's and you know what? I was not comfortable. I was not comfortable. And so I moved way out here in Josh, near Joshua yeah. Tree. And I found a, a street that is. Okay. You know, it's Latinos uh, live across the street. There's five women that live across the street that are sisters. Oh, wow. You know, okay. They, they who knows what's going on? They're just I interesting guess. ladies. People yeah. to me, the Black family. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Invite me over for supper. Next yeah. to me is a, a, a Guatemalan man who was uh, chief detective of uh, one of the um, police stations here. Wow. You know, I, I'm so much more at home. You know? It's just like, yeah. I don't know. I go into Palm. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to go. Never mind. It's just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, like, yes. I like diversity. It yeah. keeps me going. Yeah. And to think that it's somehow bad is it's I know. I know. And I, you know, obviously I agree with you completely. But no, but but in the larger sense, and I was trying to say that we're both creatives, a lot of us creatives, 
many of us feel that way. It's like we just want I guess the thing is, you know, as it all goes down in the big scheme of the grand scheme of it all, we all want the same four or five things most of the time. And that's usually good food, sometimes good sex, uh, or or love. You know, we all want that or, or love, one or the other, or both. Uh, we want good friendships. We want a place to live right. that's decent and to do something that's decent work-wise. So I was like, I, I, I've noticed that more often than not, that's what most, a lot of Americans want. Yeah. Um, and, but there are others who don't want that and they're loud right now. They're right. very loud right now. Exactly. They're attacking women and LGBTQI plus and trans and- And, all, and this is without saying people of color. That yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. at all. Yeah. But it's interesting, they started with women you know, by reversing. Um, but everybody knows that this has been going on against Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And the orange thing, uh, yeah. I just- uh, it's, a, it's, ama it's amazing to me right, that this, how strong the orange thing has gotten and how, and how yeah. lasting it yeah. has, because you're right, during Bush was happening, during Reagan, this, this is not new, this is nothing, uh, nothing new. Reagan. <laughs> our oh. favorite, right? Our favorite back in the 80s. You know, he's he's no different than, Reagan was no different than Trump, really. Right, right. He's, I knew people, because I was in the ACLU, I knew people oh, wow. who knew him. Okay. Yeah. Well, as a member. Um, yeah. I, I knew people that knew him and had gone to party, big, big, you know, uh, yeah. higher ups. And they said he was fried his first term. His first term, he had dementia so bad that he would say things like, are there any more cookies? You know, he was fried. Yes. Fried. He was just a tool. Yeah. And the yeah. orange thing is too. And yeah. Hitler was too. You know, yeah. Hitler was backed by. Well, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Prescott Bush. Yes. Backed, you know, we all know this, right? Yeah, we do. No, no we don't. It's miss. a wormhole. It's yeah, just a nasty, it nasty wormhole. Yeah. And I hope we can fix it. Well, you know, and I always tell people, I said, but dur during these strange times of COVID yeah. and monkeypox and all this stuff, a lot of beautiful art is actually born out of it. That's true. That's it is true. true. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, um, they say that's where a lot of you know, protest songs come and things right. happen. Right. I just mean, also not even just that, but just because we just, you know, the creative juices are flowing. We want to give people something alternative to what's going on sometimes. We all, we all have our roles, right? We As artists, your role may be to write fight the power and all those kind of songs. But your role over here may be, I'll write a gorgeous ballad and take you away. I mean, it's just, we all have our roles, right? Right, 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 right. And yeah. you're right, yeah, I remember the 60s. I mean, I was a little too young for the, yeah. the whole thing, but look at the songs that produced. Came out of there. Oh, wow. Like Damn. completely, completely. But I think it's gone too far. Like this, this whole idea of the orange thing being every single morning on the news. Every single morning. Every single morning. Every single morning. Oh, he loves it. He thrives. He, does, he does. And, the, and you know, even the liberal media, they suck it up too. It's ratings. It's so sick. Yeah, he, is it? I always said if the liberal media just ignored him, he would hate <gasps> He would hate you know, It's funny that you say that because um, I remember watching when he was running against Hillary Clinton and thinking, what? You know, there used to be a thing about equal time for candidates he sucked that right up well who's responsible for that why wasn't that hello media it was ratings he'd say right. outrageous things and he's stupid as a cow right. but cows are smarter and then yeah they're smart. They're, don't yeah. insult the cows girl we like we like our animals well, he's being he's a puppet yeah, you know, yeah. it's certainly putin's baby that's just my own I actually did i did an interview and someone said the same thing actually so we're all on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. We're both ranting and no, it's, 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 it's kind of nice. You know, it's nice when you meet someone yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, this is my, this, this, no, this is what my shows are about. And people know this. Um, Extra Connections is a conversation between two people. And that's why I don't cut this shit out because for me, it's all important. And for you to take your own at home, you guys go, I agree or I don't agree, whatever. But this is conversations. And I talk about people who, we talk all kinds of stuff. It's not yeah. just one little. Because oh. I'm talking. You know what, Shelly? I'm tired of. I'm tired of infotainment. That's yeah. what everything is turned into. So yeah. I'm always trying to go back to just the regular conversation. I'm going to write that down. Hold on. Infotainment. That's my thing. I, I just I bugs the shit out of me. I'm all about conversations. That's why I have my fans. I'm doing this for 15 years. 
That's why they like me. Because I just say, let's have a real conversation. You can not like or like, but I always see the comments always go, great conversation. Or I enjoy the conversation. Like, it's a conversation. Yeah. You don't right. have to agree with everything you're saying. That's fine. But still, still get her single. Um, but, 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 but you know what I mean? It's like, but you know, you can come on, you can come on here and go, buy my new song. It's called this and it's on this and, and I love life and bye. And you can do that. Well, I want that too. I want people to buy my song. No, I don't, don't get me wrong. I want that's people that's to hear it. Buy the song. It. It's on buy Apple it. Music, you know, iTunes, get it. No, we're, no, we're going to promote the F out of it. Don't worry. I know. <laughs> I, know. I, was I was just being a selfish artist. That's hilarious. I love it. I love it. I love it, Shelly. I love it. But you know what? I know you know what I mean deep down. What I mean is by you come on and smile and just like, and that's it. And then people don't like, well, who is she? People people do want to know the person behind the songs, yeah, I think. And so now you may have just gained a whole bunch of new fans who are like, I, I, I like the song. I agree with what she's saying. I like her philosophy. You know, we're like-minded. So that's part of, that's why this conversation's also. That's kind of like the, right. the, the crux of this. But yes, buy her song, people. <laughs> Or her EP comes out, buy that too. Buy the song, buy the song, buy the song. Exactly, no, we don't, we, so trust me, I'm known as the master promoter in this business. I promote everything, I promote all my stuff all the time. Oh, promote, yeah. Promote, 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 promote. Um, yeah, I need to, I get a little more savvy. Dominic has helped a lot, obviously. Yes, I know Dominic for years, so that's why when he oh, said, when he says me people, I always say yes, because I'm like, oh, I know they'll be interesting like you. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, but no, it, it's, it is important also because you are an artist who's trying to uh, get her name out there and try to make And a baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. I love dogs. Hi, oh, Angel. Hi, boy. Hey, look. You're a beautiful sweet. black dog. Look at you. How, look how beautiful you are. Look at those oh, white eyes. Wow. Oh, he's such a sweetheart. He oh. goes everywhere with me. Everywhere. I can tell you he's a cuddler. I can tell you he's a cuddler. He's not. Oh, he's not? No, he really has an Asperger personality. Wow, interesting. Um, every once in a while, like he'll lick me when I wake up. Uh, when he, he never wakes, he never bothers me if, unless I wake up. Um, he's just a strange little guy, but you know, I love him, you know? He, and, and, and I love it if he was a lap dog. Oh God, yes, <laughs> he's not. But check this out. This is where he sits while I interview. Let's see. Oh. Well, hi yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. On my dining table. Yes. In the, <laughs> hey, in the, oh, hi, buddy. Yes. In the sun. Uh, in, the sun. in the sun. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Okay. He's got the right camera angle always. Yes, I love but he it. Don't, he, if you take out a camera, he runs. He does not like. That's so funny. Uh, anyway. I want to ask you, as we, because we, I could talk to you forever. I have to wrap this up, of course. Thank I can talk you. To you forever. Uh, but I want to ask you, what is one thing you've learned about yourself leaving the big old city? Oh, that I didn't know how much I missed solitude. Mm. I didn't know. I didn't know that I could wake up in a community that is nothing but palm trees and silence, complete silence. I can walk out from my house and there are trails that lead into the foothills. Okay. And that is just not now. Bloody hot! Oh, but... I don't know. <laughs> I go I'm, the, I'm I'm crying over here in Inglewood by the by the airport. I can only imagine where you live. Oh, like 109 yesterday. Oh, but, you know, I'm blessed. I have a nice air conditioning. I have okay. a good life. And um, I was going to ask you, just as an aside, yeah. have you ever heard the term "bread and circus"? Bread and circus? Yeah, look it up. No, 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 no that's her. No. Oh, you'll love it. It's what's going on right now. Okay. I think it's from the ancient Roman times, and you give the people bread and circus infotainment. Oh, yes. Look I it get up. it. It's fascinating. Fascinating. It's, um, it's what's going on now with every television show, bread and circus, and, and especially with reality shows. Um, I just wrote that down. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, The Bachelorette. Red and circus, so creepy. Mixed in with a little sexy. Right. <laughs> we're gonna find. We're gonna find a man. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna, we're gonna all compete for the one woman. You know all that stuff. Like that is just. It's insane. It's insane. It's. It's, it's insane. I know it's insane. Sorry for the money, whatever. Yeah, it's the lowest common denominator. Right. Possible. You know. Like it just shows how special you aren't. 
That's what these shows show. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm sorry to make you laugh, but that's how I look at us. That's what you aren't. That's how I look at it. Oh, okay. Now, uh, that is a song title we should write. Oh, but we, I know. That's what you aren't. Right, and you know that. why? Because it could be a sign of a song for the times. Yes. How special you aren't. Art. You know, I'll have to really chew on it, but I get an image already. Of, I'm kind of getting one too all of a sudden. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, well, you know, we could do it, definitely. I if you need any ideas, I'll, I'll roll them over to you. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you want to finish them off. But it is a great song title. It is. But I always say that. But that that's, that's how I viewed it. It's like, there's 25 women to one guy or 25 guys to one girl. And I'm like, and they're all like, oh, he he loved me last night on the, on our date. And I'm like, but that's how special you are. You're one of just right. 25 women on yeah. this reality show we know is super produced. Yeah. Because like, I work in television, so I know it's produced. But like, you're not, you're not that, I mean, and sadly, you're not that special. Right, right. That's kind of the problem. Yeah, and, and I was thinking of the orange one. That, well, that, that too. That's, yeah, that's what I was thinking is a song. A song yeah, of the okay. times. How special you aren't. You hate women. You, I mean, I wouldn't put it that literally. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, look at what you do. I mean, I was, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. We, we're on the right page, my man. We are. We are. <laughs> so, now we'll do the promotion. Tell me where they can find you and where they can find the song. Okay. You can uh, just go to Apple Music, type in the bottles on my side, and it'll come up in iTunes. <laughs> or you can just do iTunes. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, and just iTunes and type in uh, the bottles on my side. There's some uh, you, Spotify, but just type in the song. Uh, Amazon.com, um, AmazonMusic.com. You can buy it there. Um, I'm not so much concerned about you know the 99 cents or 69 cents, whatever it costs. I want to just get um, some real followers and build a buzz about this particular go. song, and then the EP will come. It's also, you know, I, I received an arts grant recently. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. They're paying, they're helping me out. Good. For um, recordings. And stuff, which is Good. Special. Folks, it costs money to record stuff too. So let me just know that. But yes. What? When you want to, I was saying, I was kind of, it costs money when you want good recordings done. You bet. And, you know, I, I'm spoiled. I have, I'm absolutely not going to release anything that's not broadcast quality. I just I'll blame you. Girl, I'll blame, I'll blame you. You know, I will be picky about sound. Um, that's why I was so grateful that Greg did it because he's like, you know, he's Greg Wells, and uh, yeah, he was done, you know, in his studio and just perfect, perfect. Um, well, I understand I that when you work, when you work the best, you don't yeah. want to go back. You don't go back. It's like eating a, a good steak. You don't go back and have steak at Sizzle. Right. You're, you're right. eating at you know, you at Morton's or whatever. Like I don't go back right. like that. And you know what I've noticed too. The higher up the ladder you get, or echelon, or people that are super successful, like Paul Bush knows the premier. A, it's a, he's an A studio player, and he tours. He's touring with uh, and he's a friend. He tours with uh, Tim McGraw right now, okay. and he's just the most loving, wonderful. The higher up you go, some of the middle, and you know, it's interesting. Yeah, do you find that true? Uh, yes, I say. It. Oh my God, you're just speaking my language. I say it all the time. People ask me. Because I've met, I've interviewed A list to F list, and I've done both. Right, right, and I'll right. tell you, the A and the A and B list usually are really, really sweet. Yeah. Before the interview, during the interview, and after the interview, I've had some great talks afterwards. We're laughing and talking and laying down. Yeah. It's the ones that are got a little piece, maybe a piece of success, or kind of started. They're so different. Yeah. yeah. Very different, and I'm like. Yeah. That's interesting. It's like um, I just talked to so I talked to I, I was I'm a, I was a friend of Ed Asner who passed away last year. Oh, and my like time what? Emmy winner Ed Asner, right? Yeah, he could he could treat me however he wanted to, but he did. He was always super sweet, so we had laughs and talk. I was saying, you just you're on a TV show right now that's hot right now. You just your first role, and you won't take your shades off during the interview, and you're asking a one word question answers. But Ed Asner, who's who literally has a shelf full of Emmys. Who's well respected? And just tell me all kind of. What do you want to know, James? Just tell, ask me, and then just, and just give me these ten. Like, I just, it, 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 I say it all the time. It's the, when it's the mid level. There's something going on with them. It's like, oh, are, the, they, are, they, are the, are the uh, nouveau? 
the yes. nouveau label yes. level. Yes. That's tough because they're full of themselves. They haven't. No. They just don't know yet. Because you're not both. You you have both know rich people. I know some rich people. I know some, I, my phone. I have some people who are. I like them. I like them. And, they, and we're fine. But the, it's the one. So you're right. No, I'm saying it's the ones that are newer at this thing. Right, right. Do you happen to know, just out of curiosity, Kirk Farquhar? Yes, I do. I love him. He's been. I've interviewed him. I, I've I've known him for years. You're kidding. Oh my god. You know, because, we go back. We wrote. We wrote together. Oh my and, god. Yeah, we still stay in touch. So do, so do we. On Facebook. He follows oh. me. He loved the song. Oh god. Um, he is one of the nicest of men you will ever meet. Completely, he's totally, like completely. And he's funny. Yes. He's funnier than hell. Oh yes. my god. Well, well, here's what's funny, little side note, folks, little thing. So Kurt Farquhar is a wonderful, wonderful TV composer. Like he does yeah. a lot of TV shows. Back in the day, it was girlfriends. I saw him. Was girlfriends. He did. Oh, Stephanie, that. right? Is it Stephanie? Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, I wrote with I mean, her. I actually. Yeah, well, the yeah. same thing. So that's how I met him years ago. With that, I've had him. I had him on my show years ago, and I say it's come back. I think he's really busy these days. But he does a lot of different shows, and so he has a brother also who does who does composition production too. So that's what we're right. talking. Right. So about. he he was the creator of Married with Children's. Brother. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. But I don't want to show people at home. No, we're, we're we're having a conversation. But I want to show this who it is. You, my interviews with them on my show, my my award winning show, breaking into. Um, I, it was it was several years ago, and but we still keep in touch too. I do know Kurt. I do know him. So yes, He's, I, I tell you, and he, we wrote I think one song together, and then we collaborated on something else. And he was looking for a different guitar player, and it was when he got the job to do um, King of Queens. Yes, he was and he yeah. found I forgot his name. I'd met him many times. His uh, his, but he the the guitar player was coming up with these crazy awesome riffs that didn't make sense and were out of just like dissonant and it worked. Yeah. I mean, I, that's one of my favorite TV series to rewatch because the music, the bumpers in between. Yes, yes. Oh my god. Yeah, he's a good, good man. I really yeah. Do. See, now you know, I probably know a lot of people in comedy. Probably know I, I'm somebody yeah. some people call me the most famous, non-famous person in Hollywood. I just know everybody. <laughs> just, I just kind of slide through. I say hi to everybody. I know everybody. I just don't. I I've interviewed everybody. I just I just don't. I don't. I, I don't really cares. I don't. I don't. You know. I'm just. I'm just James. You know. I'm just yeah. whatever. And I. I, I so I, appreciate I, you taking time for me. I really. That's my no. My and pleasure. When you said something, of course, it brought an image to my head of. I'm the most famous non -per non famous person. I saw this image of a star on Hollywood Walk of Fame. There's nothing on it. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? From your lips to God's ear, I would love to have a star on. Nothing on it. Who is it? Who is it? It could be like this big publicity thing. It oh, it's be. gonna be James Lott. Uh, we're waiting. See? Isn't that I funny? Know. I've been in business 15 years. I'm still I'm still in it. I'm still here. Well, you're still here. in it. So you've had a lot. I'm just honored to, to spend time with you, truly. Well, no, my seriously, my pleasure, Shelly. I feel very connected to you. So thank you for your mm -hmm. time, too. Awesome. And so the song is called The Bottles On My Side or By My Correct. Side. Correct. Yeah, my side. definitely, Correct. definitely. Bottles on my side. But I'll put all the stuff in the links inside. So you guys, okay. click, you guys just click to it and make it easy for you guys. Awesome. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Extra Connections. We're on Facebook's Connection Show. JLJ Media is everywhere you want to be. James Lodd Jr. is everywhere you want to be, including TikTok and all those things. I have TikTok songs I throw on every once in a while for a minute. Uh, oh. I, make, I, make up, I make up songs in the last, you know, last minute. But everything's at James Lodd Jr. I made it simple, simple to everybody. It's James Lodd Jr., James Lodd Jr., James Lodd Jr., or JLJ Media. And this show is everywhere, audio and video. It'll be available both. Um, so that's you just look it up for this. You'll see it. Uh, Shelly Ray Speck is her name, and don't forget it. All right. I'm Terrence Jr. I'll see you guys. Oh, later. one last oh, question. Yes. Oh, that yes. was your bye bye. But um, when yes. is this going to air? Uh, I'll let you know afterwards. I'll let you know afterwards. Goodbye. Right. Everybody else will know it's airing. We'll okay. see you next time. Thank you, my darling. <laughs>